Although thousands of international legal graduates apply for the match each year, it can be difficult to find the right information regarding the residency match process. The reason being that anecdotal information predominates and it might not always be clear how one person's experience relates to you. Maybe you went to a different school or you are interested in a different specialty or had different USMLE scores or maybe you have limited research experience. Whatever the case, it always feels like the available information is incomplete. The National Residency Matching Program's publicly available data can help you get a better sense of your chances. In this video, I'll be helping you interpret data from this National Residency Matching Program. So let's start with some quick background. First, you need to know your status. If you're watching this video, chances are you are either enrolled in or graduated from a medical school outside of Canada and the US. As such, you will be classified as an international medical graduate, uh, also called IMG. There are two types of IMGs. The first category groups US citizens or permanent residency card holders enrolled in or graduating from a medical school outside of Canada and uh, the US. These are your US IMGs. And then the second category is made up of non-US citizens and non-US permanent residency card holders. These are your non-US IMGs. So take note that the IMG label has to do with the location of your medical school and not your nationality. So for example, a non-US citizen enrolled at a US medical school is considered a US medical graduate and not an IMG. So why does this matter? Well, if you are an IMG, you can only register for the United States Medical Licensing Exam or USMLE if you meet the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates eligibility criteria. So this is also called ECFMG. So what happens after you meet this eligibility criteria is you are going to liaise with ECFMG to make sure that you are able to um, verify your credentials and that you are able to register for the USMLE. What's more, chances of success during the match vary significantly uh, depending on your status. So while match rates among US uh, medical graduates regularly exceeds 90%, IMG match rates will exceptionally exceed 70%. In fact, non-US IMG match rates in the majority of specialties will be less than 50%. So let's take a look at the data. I made a few graphs from the NRMP data using Tableau Public so we can all see the bigger picture. Feel free to pause the video at any time or if you want to play around with these figures, I'll be adding corresponding links in the description below. So first, let's check out the number of positions that are available. You see that internal medicine is a clear winner with 9,809 spots in 2022. That's actually up more than 600 spots from 2021. Family medicine is next with 4,916 spots and pediatrics with 3,016. Well, looking at the bottom of this, we see vascular surgery, interventional radiology, and radiation oncology. So you're probably thinking to yourself, is the number of available spots a good indicator? Well, no, it's not. So let's take a look at the number of applicants per available spots. The idea here being that if we compare the number of applicants per available spot, we should get a proxy of competitivity. Now here we see there are only three specialties with fewer applicants and spots. What I mean by this is that there are only three specialties that have a ratio less than one. So interestingly, we see radiation oncology as one of them. We equally notice that the majority of high applicant ratio specialties are surgical. So looking at the 2021 data, uh, that is the blue dots, we can see a somewhat consistent trend. You can see that it's almost looking like positive correlation there, right? Now, considering that this data includes US medical graduate data, and we previously stated that they had higher match rates, that is greater than 90% than IMGs, we said would usually be even less than 50%. So let's take a look at the non-US IMG match rates by specialty. 
immediately we notice that the surgical specialties have some of the lowest non-US IMG match rates whereas uh, pediatrics, uh, pediatric neurology, emergency medicine and internal medicine have some of the more favorable match rates. So I hope by now you understand two things, right? So first, that the match might be a difficult process but it is by no means impossible. Second, that the amount of effort needed to match is dependent on a specialty. Hence, if you're going to put your best foot forward, you will need to work on the measurables and intangibles. Regarding the measurables, you probably know this already, but it will be your USMLE scores, right? Your USMLE step two clinical knowledge scores. Uh, we will no longer be talking about a step one because as you probably know, it's now pass fail. It's also important to think about your research experience and research output and obviously the US clinical experience and leadership experiences, your graduate or postgraduate qualifications. So this may be your master's or PhD degrees. These are not indispensable, but the idea usually is if you've done a master's or PhD, you're more likely to be involved in research. So when we look at the NRMP IMG charting outcomes, which again is an amazing resource for this purpose, we see a lot of things. We see that yes, there is a definite division regarding USMLE scores, at least for step one and step two. Again, notice here that the step one scores exist here because it's going to take a couple of years usually to get a cohort that started with the USMLE as pass fail. So these are folks that probably sat the USMLE back in 2020 or earlier. So they still have the USMLE step one scores. And as we are expecting that the USMLE uh, step one has become pass fail, therefore there's going to be a shift towards the USMLE step two, but also probably a shift towards research experience and research output. So if you are a medical student right now, a non-US IMG, I would highly recommend that you start getting involved in research as soon as possible and that you start getting some output. So whether that's abstracts, presentations, and also publications, definitely you want to try that. And regarding the journals, they're also important, you know, so you want to get into journals that are usually affiliated with your specialty of interests, um, organizational bodies, so that you can get some street cred. All of this is quite good, but bear in mind that no single metric can guarantee you a match. The truth of the matter is many programs will not consider IMGs respective of their measurables. So therefore, it is your duty to make sure that the programs you're applying to will consider your application. This information will be department specific as it is not uncommon to see within the same institution that one department will interview and rank IMGs while another department will not. One of the easier and cheaper ways to do this is to check the list of residents on the department website. Since the department that have previously matched an IMG are more likely to match an IMG and so also because the more IMGs there are in a program, the more likely you can match in that program. So you could type on Google resident plus sign the specialty you're interested in plus sign the program you're interested in. And if you do not know which programs to search for, you can find a full list of programs by specialty on the NRMP website. Now, having said that, you should bear in mind that no single metric can guarantee you will match. You still have to meet the minimums, right? So meet the minimum so that you put yourself in the best situations and conditions. And so the earlier you know what these minimums are, the better it's going to be for you so that you can work towards them. Now, regarding intangibles, they will include your network and your ability to connect with faculty and residents. This cannot be emphasized enough. The most obvious way your network will come through for you is via your letters of recommendation. These letters of recommendation play a big role. However, your network will be even more effective if your mentors and sponsors can make calls to program directors on your behalf. This may be calls to get you to be in that interview part. And even after the interview, there may be, there may be calls that help push your candidature a little bit further. It goes without saying that the effectiveness of set calls would depend on your mentor's or sponsor's relationship with the program director. The other important intangible is you. Every interaction that you have should showcase your affability, your availability, and your ability. Do not make the mistake of neglecting interactions with junior residents, administrative staff within the department or nurses. Uh, simply put, people should love being around you. And uh, the way to do that is for you to take a genuine interest in people and try to make their lives and their work easy. And regarding your specialty specifically, try to reach out to IMGs, maybe other programs you're interested in or within other programs that have made it in your specific specialty. If you're lucky enough, maybe it might be someone from the same region 
or countries you maybe the same medical school uh, but if that's not the case it's still fine you can still work on it based on this information i would be very interested in knowing in your case which of these do you feel is easier to meet and which ones do you struggle with and uh, hopefully we can help you work through those ones that you may struggle with so that you can put yourself in the best position to be a resident now that's all for me today uh, see you in the next episode ciao ciao